So you are that solopreneur cleaner who does it all. Like you take the phone calls, you do the invoicing billing, you do the cleaning, then most likely you come back home, do either groceries, cook for your kids, spend time and or go spend time with your friends. And it seems like there's not enough time in a day for you. So you feel like yourself like a hamster in a wheel just running around and literally not getting anywhere. Well, then you're in the right place because this is exactly what we're going to discuss in this particular video, when to hire the first cleaner. Let's get started. If you like content like this, like, share, subscribe, bring in your friends and families and actually share your thoughts and experiences so we can all learn and grow together. When is the right time to hire a cleaner? And I know the feeling. When I started with a backpack just cleaning the house for $70, I really did not want to pay out $50 to $45 to someone else to do the job. That was one of the hardest skills for me to learn. Not only how to part with my money, but also how to delegate the project. And unless you learn both of those skills, you will not be able to buy back your time. You will not be able to gain the freedom. You will not be able to reap all the benefits that this amazing cleaning industry has to offer for you, my friends. So to answer that question, I know it's not the answer that you're looking for, but you should be able to hire your very first cleaner the moment you can, as soon as you can. And I'll elaborate on this. As I said, it probably is not the answer that you've been looking for, but hear me out. The goal for you is to become a business owner, not a glorified cleaner who, who wears the business owner and works inside of the business. The goal for you to, to start working on the business and, and how you would do this is by delegating and outsourcing it. Of course, giving away that $55 out of $70 job was really difficult for me. I even remember my brother when I was coming back, I was talking to him, he was in Uzbekistan and, and he's like, dude, so what happened today? I'm like, I finished my work and I'm coming from a work, going to another work. He's like, how much money did you make? Well, I had a help. I paid someone 55 bucks. I charged a customer $70. He's like, what, did you make just $15? I'm like, yup. And he was pretty much like, dude, I make way more here and I'm still with my friends and family. Why did you leave? But it was, but you work yourself up. So when you look at this, basically, when you have an income and you're working for someone, you've got an income and incrementally the income goes up. But you know you will hit at some point the ceiling because you're building somebody else's dreams. You're not building your own. As Farah Gray says, build your own dreams or somebody else will hire you to build theirs, right? So you know you're going up and now inside that you know you came to America, you took all the risks, you started your company not so you can be working for, some, for someone else, you need to make a switch. Whenever you make that switch, your income that was going up is going to dip and then it's going to keep going back up and then you're going to break this ceiling and go up. So let's say you already have a cleaning company because that's why you're watching this. So you were going up on your salary. You have to give away everything you have. Take a leap of faith in your skills and you've already done it multiple times. So I know you can do this. And then you took a dip. It dropped when you started your company, then you start building it out and then you slowly start making your income. And right here, you either, you're feeling yourself after self-employment, that the next dip you're feeling yourself, you're pretty much making what it is, but then now you work more, quite frankly, right? So this is where you need to make another dip. Part your money, part with your money because you need to delegate. You need to free up your time so your time can be well spent on business development. The intent is to grow and make more. So instead of making $70 here, you could you would rather give $55 to someone, make $15, but when you have 10 of those jobs, A, you're not swinging the hammer anymore, and then 10 of those jobs of $15 are $150 versus $70 then you would work and you would be beat up. So when you come to a second dip, you take the dip again. And then you go, as you, your business is growing, you start getting more people and income and then you start delegating and start investing and opening up the office cleaning, ship wax, window cleaning, etc. different divisions of your service, offering more like a holistic business for your customers. So therefore, you'd have to take a dip. And 
The reason I said as soon as you can is because I understand for some people it's not the time just yet. Which means you might be a single parent, you might have a lot of debt that you need to pay for those that are out of country that you support. Your bills probably are not there, meaning your income is barely covering your mortgage, rental expenses and etc. And you have college savings plans and debt, etc. that you have to pay. So therefore, the very first thing that you would need to do is shift here and understand that A, until I start parting my ways, parting my with my money and delegating, right? Until I start delegating, I will not grow because I can only do so much myself before I run out of the time, energy and effort. So then you work yourself way up. Let's say you have one job, then you get two jobs. So get those two jobs. Now you outsource one of them and then bring in someone else, maybe help, right? So 15 from here and $20 from this, it starts adding up. So you start working your way up. So you, you get two jobs, you outsource one, one you do yourself on a weekend or whenever you have time, then you get two, then you outsource th those two because you got a bigger job. So as soon as you can. For me, it was that very first Paca job that I had, or also in Towson, I had an office cleaning project. And I started delegating them because I knew one, the Paca job was during the daytime, and this is when the phone would ring, and the office cleaning job in Towson was at the evenings. And I'm like, I can't, like during the daytime, I have to be answering the phone, but also go watch another video where I told how I was hiring people so I could claim back my time. So if you, in, this, in that stage, so I, I had to be basically answering the phones, got the answering service at the same time, but then I'm like, hey, if I answer the phones myself, then the, the chance of me closing the projects go up. And then the nighttime job, I outsourced that as well because I'm like, hey, if I'm not sleeping at night, then I'm beat up next morning. Then when the, those leads come in, then I'm not at my best, which means my chances of closing that account reduce instead of going up. So you have to keep as a business owner, solopreneur, cleaner, immigrant cleaner, minority cleaner, you have to keep your attitude and body and mind at an optimum performance because everything is about percentages, right? So there, there's no guarantee that when the phone call comes in, you're like upped and pumped and you're going to close it. But what's going to happen is your chances to close go up. Everything is about the chances, right? Same with the seat belt. If you think about it, seal, wearing a seat belt is a law and it increases of our chances of survival in case of a, an accident. But there are instances when people survive purely because they weren't buckled up, right? But the chance is small. So what we want to do is increase our chances. So if it's a nighttime job, cleaners, usually our jobs are sporadic. Morning, nighttime, afternoon dead and we literally sit, right? So if it's a nighttime job, outsources whenever you can, so you can regain and be on an optimal performance. When it's a daytime, you need to be there for fun, but for that you need to be generating. So again, remember the goal is to create a, a business owner, not a glorified cleaner. And delegation is one of them. If you haven't watched the video, how I hired the people in what order, go ahead and watch it because if you're a solopreneur right now, you need to go to the next stage, you need to start delegating. And I outline exactly how in what order I was hiring people so I could gain my time back. I can't wait to see on that video. Like, share, subscribe, click the bell notification and bring in your friends and family so we can all learn and share your experiences. See you on the next one.